Again, magandang hapon po sa lahat at welcome sa ating Sabbath School uh, ngayong uh, hapong ito. So, uh, natapos po tayo sa uh, tinuro ni Brother John uh, last four Sundays uh, regarding sa buhay ni John Calvin. Um, ngayon po... Uh, tayo ay magkakaroon ng isa pang mini-series. Uh, mas mini pa dun sa binigay ni Brother John before. So, two-part series lang ito. And ang ating tatalakayin ay, though hindi man sobrang, I would say, lalim na theology, uh, like yung discussions natin about uh, distinctions about the, the Reformed faith or yung tulip or whatnot, I would think and I believe that our topic this morning, uh, this afternoon, is a topic that is also beneficial sa atin, lalo na sa ating practical life. And I want to begin by showing a picture. This picture. So, kung makikita po natin, may isang, uh, don't worry, yan lang po yung tanging picture ko for the, this afternoon. Um, yan po ay picture ng isang uh, sasakyan na dinadiagnose. Uh, na pili ko po itong parang introductory sa uh, aking lecture. Sure. Kasi yung, yung sasakyan ho namin, uh, kung may nakarinig na po habang nasa parking, kailangan po dalawang, I think dalawang beses mo siyang start bago talaga siya tuluyang mag-start. And so, nakailang balik na po kami sa um, mekaniko. May mga sinabi silang sira, na ayusin, uh, ganito lang daw yung gagawin dyan, pero still, andun pa rin yung sira. So, napaka gawa na. Oh, I, I thought our car is already fixed. Uh, I'm, okay, I will convert my... <laughs> oh, it's okay. Oh, you're, you're his future help meet, so it's your job. <laughs> oh, it's okay, but I, I'll try my best to convert not just the, the slides to keynote, but also my language. <laughs> Sorry. Um, where was I? Oh, I was there. Uh, um, I, 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 I was lost. But I'm found. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, the car. So, false alarm. Our car is not yet fixed. Um, but yeah, uh, we have been going to and fro to the auto shop uh, just so that our car would get fixed. But it hasn't been fixed until now. So clearly, there is a problem that is unknown to us and also to the mechanic. Uh, just as a union transition code for uh, this, that is my transition for this afternoon. Just as we, uh, our family feels the negative effects of the unknown car problem, uh, we will, as a Christian, definitely feel the negative effects of any sin that is unknown to us. If a known sin is big enough to cause us problems, just imagine sins that are hidden within. And yung po yung ating topic nga ngayong ha uh, That is our topic this afternoon, the sins that are hidden within. So again, this is a two-part uh, series, and this is lecture one. So before I begin any further, I want to give credit where it is due uh, sa uh, uh, mga books that I have read uh, to help me uh, in, on this lecture. So uh, first and foremost is uh, the uh, the chapter that Obadiah Sedgwick has contributed in a compilation of uh, topics about secret sins, uh, which is compiled by Free Grace Broadcaster, issue 209. Also, the book of Mark Jones, Knowing Sin. And though I have not quoted, I also use the Reformation Study Bible and see the commentaries there, uh, generally by R.C. Sproul. And of course, our confession, 1689. Baptist Confession of Faith. So, uh, you will see those uh, being quoted uh, as we go along. Next, I want us to have this in mind uh, as we think about this topic of secret sins. 
And ito ho yun. It is the desire of a Christian to be cleansed from all sins. If you have heard our topic this morning, uh, bilang uh, mga Christians, uh, the, the, the truth about the gospel should have already been clear and revealed to us. Unlike in the Old Testament where it has not been fully revealed, now we have the New Testament to go to so that whatever is being told to us by the Word of God is clear sa atin, mabigyang linaw, masagot. And dahil doon, alam natin, we know now the bigger picture that there is a sin problem with the world. Uh, how Pastor X has compared uh, the book of Revelation to the book of Genesis. Uh, sinasabi, uh, Pastor X has mentioned that the, 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 the design of God that, was, that we see in the book of Genesis is also being pictured in Revelation. However, there is, there is a story in the middle that nangyari because Adam failed his part in his covenant with God. And so it plunged the people, the mankind, into sin. And so we have this uh, sin problem. But as believers who have been redeemed uh, by the finished work of Christ, we know it now. And so because we know it, it is our desire to be cleansed from the sins that is in dwelling with us. And even though we have already been converted, even though we are already Christians, oh yes, definitely there is still remaining sin in us. Just take for example the case of the Apostle Paul. Uh, though he is already an apostle, he still recognizes that there is indwelling sin in him. It may not be towards others, but definitely there is sin that is happening within him. And ultimately, it's a sin towards God. Uh, if we go to Romans chapter 7, uh, verses 24 to 25, Paul states there, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. So he still recognizes that his body is still in its corrupt state. So uh, if we, if you are familiar in this chapter of the book of Romans, uh, mamia iko quote din natin siya. Uh, pero this is uh, the chapter where Paul says, "I do the, the thing that I do not want to do. I do the, the, the thing that I want to do. I do not do." May kita ho natin siya, mamaya. Um, connection lost daw. Uh, wait lang po, sorry. Okay, so good. So, all right. So, sorry, nagkaro ng mis ng disconnection dito sa kino. Um, so, going back. So, if the apostle Paul has that mindset and that recognition within him that even in the apostle that he is, there is still indwelling sin. Kanun din hu dapat tayo bilang mga Kristiano. We should have that that acknowledgement in us that we still have indwelling sin in us, and therefore, again, the desire to be cleansed from all sins. Now, there are when I mean all, uh, when I say all. I mean all, not just those that are exposed in public, but also those that are in secret. So, uh, ito po si Obadiah Sedwick, and uh, he said, Verily, brethren, it was not sin abroad or outside, but at home. It was not sin without, but at this time, sin within. It was not Paul's sinning with man, but Paul's sinning with Paul. It was that law of his members warring secretly within him against the law of his mind. This made that holy man to cry out so, to complain so. So, uh, yun po yung sinasabi ni Obadiah Sedwick uh, regarding the Apostle Paul. So, 
we must <laughs> fix the problem. Uh, sandali na pa. looking for a connection. Oh. Oh, there. I know. Okay, last na. Uh, it doesn't have a connection, pero it seems na pag sinuslide ko, nag gumagana naman siya. So. Sige po. So, uh, itulog ko na lang po. Uh, does everyone have the, the printouts naman? Sige. So, um, mamaya po pagka nangyari po ulit, I can just go through uh, using the, uh, the the paper. So, ayun po. Uh, again, uh, that being said, uh, kailangan ho natin mag-strive to mortify not just the known sins, but also the secret ones. Okay, so hindi lang po enough na uh, we are preventing ourselves from doing things sinfully that other people may see. We also have to make sure that with integrity, we really stop everything, even those that are that may not be known by any other people. And with that in mind, meron po tayong dalawang uh, questions that I want to answer today. First is when are sins called secret? I said may known sins. I said that there are secret sins. So when are sins kept secret? Then the second one is why should we desire to be cleansed from secret sins? What are the effects of a secret sin if not cleansed from it? Okay, so we will first answer the first question when are sins called secret okay so sins are called secret uno sa may dalawa kasi po yan one is with respect to god we try to hide things from god and then we try to hide things from the eyes of man so with respect to god this happens when we think that by hiding in private ay nakakapagtago ho tayo that god can see us as well but we know that that is not true. Nakikita natin sa Isaiah chapter 29, sabi ni Isaiah, Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us. So people really attempt to try to hide as if they can hide. But we can see in Proverbs, for a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. All our ways are known to God, basically. And in the day of the Lord, every one of us will give an account. Hebrews says, no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So, we try to hide things from God. We, hide, we try to hide our sins from God, but clearly, nothing is hidden from God. Uh, sabi ni Mark Jones sa kanyang book, uh, Knowing Sin, when it comes to the matter of, uh, of sin, one of the most fundamental truths a Christian must grasp concerns God's complete knowledge of all things or yung kanyang omniscience. The infinite God has no limit to what he knows. He cannot learn for he knows all things in and of himself. Because if we say that God is learning things along the way, that means that our God is not perfect. He still has to learn things. But since God is perfect, then we would presuppose that he knows all things in and of himself. He knows all things past, present, and future. 
He thus has a perfect knowledge of our sins, whether they be past, present, or future. From his perspective, there is no secret. So my point being is that we can hide nothing from God. To think we can is foolish. It's foolishness. Paisipin natin that we can somehow hide from God. Just like how Adam and Eve tried to hide when they sinned against God in the garden. As if God doesn't know where they are. We cannot hide anything from God. And therefore, secret sins with respect to God is no secret at all. We will never uh, be able to hide things from God. But then, there is the second one. Secret sins with respect to man, to mankind. So, when does this happen? Well, this happens when we hide things from the eyes of man. Tinatago natin to sa, sa mata ng tao. And there are two aspects to hiding things from the eyes of man. First one is hiding it from oneself. So, paano po nangyayari yun? This happens when one does not realize that he does sin. When one does not is not aware that he is sinning. Could it happen? Uh, yes, it could happen. We could just take the case of of the Apostle Paul uh, before his conversion to Christianity uh, what was he doing he was persecuting Christians uh, he was uh, he wanted to put them in jail he he wanted to stop them he wanted to stop Christianity basically and in his part uh, does he think that it is wrong of course not uh, in uh, in in Paul's, uh, in Paul's eyes, uh, he thinks it's piety. He, uh, he thinks it's a faithfulness to uh, the Jewish uh, religion, to Judaism. So before, he, he thought it was warranted seal. But in reality, uh, he is already sinning against God, even if it is hidden from himself. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I want you to um, go with me to... Uh, Romans chapter 1. Uh, I just want to point out something in Romans chapter 1. And it is in verse 20. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. So what Paul is basically saying here is that no one can deny the fact that there is a God. Even if it has not been told to them verbally, uh, nature itself would point people to the fact that there is a God that exists. If anyone does deny it, then uh, it is it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that God does exist. So how does that relate when someone is ignorant of the sin that he commits? Well, if the ignorance about God's existence is inexcusable, then so is ignorance of His law. It doesn't uh, it doesn't excuse us from committing sin. Now, as if oh you you don't know the the uh, that you shall not murder and you murdered oh you don't know it it's okay you're excused. Uh, let's not count it a sin for now. Uh, just like when we are um, uh, called by MMDA for a violation that we did. Ba? Uh, how many here drives and uh, nauhuli ho tayo ng MMDA? Uh, I hope not often. Uh, but even if we do, sometimes, let's say for example, uh, a street is one way, uh, but we're not from the area, so we don't know. That doesn't excuse us that we violated a uh, a uh, a direction so hinuhuli tayo or so sometimes we're not warning on but still they call out na meron tayong nagawang mali so same din po uh, ignorance to sin does not uh, i mean uh, ignorance 
does not excuse us from committing sin. So that's how sometimes we have secret sins that are secret in the sense that it's hidden from self, meaning it, we do not realize that we are sinning. So anong magiging solution natin dito? Paano, na, paano tayo magiging aware sa ating pag-commit ng sin? Uh, that is the call for us to really dive into the Word of God para malaman natin kung ano yung uh, tama at mali. Kung ano yung mga commands ni God at hindi. That way, kapag when life presents to us a um, a situation where we can we would be tempted, uh, alam natin, we are not ignorant of it anymore. Okay? The next is with respect to others. If it is hidden, so yung una, hidden from self. Yung pangalawa, hidden from others. So ito, marami hong paraan kung paano natin maitatago yung ating mga kasalanan from others. So, one... Okay, nawala ulit. Um... Sige, uh, dito na lang po muna ako sa, sa paper, no? So, so yun, uh, hidden from others. So, this happens, obviously, when one conceals the sins sa public eye. Pagka tinatago ho natin sa mga tao. And there are different ways by which one conceals sin from others. Okay, so isa-isay no natin. Meron ho akong tatlo dito. Yung una sa lahat is when it is guised as some semblance of virtue. So, what do I mean by this? This means when you continue on about sinning, and it's, it is actually seen by others, but it is guys as some form of virtue. What do I mean by that? For example, homosexuality. You're parading uh, your, uh, your homosexuality, your practice of homosexuality, but you don't call it a sin. What do you call it? It's you standing up for who you are, being yourself. Diba? So, uh, it seems good sa pandinig uh, ng, uh, ng ibang tao, but still, the Bible, even if you conceal it in that way, uh, Scripture still would, still would tell us it's still a sin. And uh, that's just one example. I'm not saying that's the only uh, example, okay? Next, when uh, we do it in a way that is far from the eyes of people. So this is the common thing that we uh, normally think of when we say secret sins. For example, when someone lusts and uh, someone uh, would decide to act upon that lust. Of course, when you would, especially when in, uh, in, in the case of pornography, uh, you would hide in your room. Uh, you won't do it when someone is at home uh, tatimingan mo ng walang tao sa bahay. Ba? Uh, and it's not just with the case of a struggle with pornography. Um, prob, uh, even sa government, di ba? When, when there is corruption, uh, pag may mga, na, mga term nga na, na under the table na nagaganap na mga usapan, usually the concept there is when it, it is under the table, it is hidden from the view of the public. So it is done in a way that is far from the eyes of people. Okay, and the, what's the third one? The third way is when man sins within himself away from mortal eyes, even in his very own eyes. So, ano ko yung ibig ko sabihin dito? For example, may galit ka, uh, kunyari sa asawa mo. Okay. Um, deep inside, galit ka, pero outwardly, Hindi siya kita. Hindi mo pinapakita. Kung baga, uh, you keep it within yourself. It is hidden from the confines of, even in your mortal eye. Actually, minsan, uh, yung pa yung nagiging uh, cause para tayo ay maging uh, proud. Di ba? Uh, minsan, uh, sasabihin natin, uh, nagtimpi tayo ng galit. Hindi natin pinakita. But still, the fact remains, nagtanim ka ng galit deep inside of you. Okay, and uh, when you, uh, you, uh, pagka meron ka nung maling klase ng galit, because remember, there is a right kind of, uh, of anger, and this, and this is anger towards sin. But if you develop a kind of anger inside you, even if it doesn't show physically, 
It's still murder. Kasi na, na, naisip mo siya sa iyong loob. So, the thing is that it is possible to hide sins from people, even from yourselves. We can say we did not commit anything, uh, even uh, so anger, sa pornography, ganun din. We could say that we didn't act upon the lust that is within us, but we cultivate the thinking. It's still sin nonetheless. Sin is committed the moment it is conceived in the heart. Okay, so those are three kinds of um, ways kung paano tayo um, nagtatago ng ating kasalanan towards others. Now, since we know what are secret sins, we will ask question. Now, why should we desire to be cleansed from secret sins? Bakit natin kailangang i-desire na tayo ay malinis mula dito sa mga kasalanan, na ganitong klase ng kasalanan? Okay, so number one, they will be public if not cleansed. So, probably it's a secret for now, but time will tell, it will become public. You will either admit to it, sabihin, you will either, uh, you, you can't contain it anymore uh, within the confines of yourself that it will show, or you will get caught by others. Or lastly, uh, you could be accountable to God on the day of the Lord, which is naman uh, sana. We uh, people think that they can hide even from God, and pero sinasabi ko dito if we go to James uh, chapter one verse fifteen, and I'll just read it uh, real quick. Okay, James chapter one verse fifteen says. Then the desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. Okay, and so, you know, yung sinasabi ko, na, that soon, sooner or later, that sin will come out. When it is fully grown, sabi ni James, brings forth death. If you still don't repent of that sin, especially if you you dwell in that sin and you you ine-enjoy mo yung kasalanan na yan, uh, Niyan is uh, probably hindi ka talaga repentant and uh, who knows in the uh, uh, we, it will just uh, we, it, you will just find out on the last days that really you have not placed your faith in Christ and therefore that sin that you develop from desire which gave birth to your sinning then brings you death okay so see the progression Therefore, we should desire to be cleansed from secret sins because they will be public if not cleansed. Sabi ni uh, Obadiah Cedric, thank you po sa, thank you. <laughs> so sabi ni Obadiah Cedric, though the first ground of sin is with the heart, yet the propensity of sin is to come forth into public. The child in the womb does not have stronger throws to get out of its private lodging than sin secretly wrought to fly into open and manifest action. Besides that, it prepares him for a temptation that suits the way. Ito yung malala. Satan shall not need to tempt him much. Uh, Satan uh, shall not need to tempt him much who has already tempted himself. He who will work sin in his heart, a weak occasion will draw it out into his life. Thirty pieces of silver will prevail with a covetous Judas who already has gold as his master in his heart. So uh, I remember a, a part of the book, if you're familiar with the book uh, of um, C.S. Lewis, uh, Screwtape Letters. So uh, may part who don't na, uh, I think si Wormwood yung name, I forgot the name of the devil. Uh, that he was being frustrated kasi parang hindi niya na, na re-reel in, parang hindi niya na tempt to sin yung, um, yung, yung, yung tao. So parang yung, yung sinabi sa kanya is, just let them be. 
magkakasala. Basta as long as wala silang access sa, sa Word of God, uh, hayaan mo sila magkakasala at magkakasala yan. I'm reminded of that when uh, when uh, Obadiah said this, that Satan shall not need to tempt him. So, ganun din kung naisipin natin, uh, really, totoo yun. Hindi na tayo kailangan i-tempt ni Satan if we ourselves are nourishing anything that is sinful within us. No? So, we have to desire to be cleansed from secret sins. Then the pangalawa, they are apt to deceive us. So secret sins will deceive us. Bakit tayo i-deceive ng secret sins? Because we do not have a... Uh, paano tayo na-deceive ng secret sins? Siyempre, una sa lahat, we do not have a strict judgment of secret sins. We are more lenient to ourselves when it comes to secret sins. Often, we think of them as slight, venial, or we think of them as no sins at all. Kumbaga, mas, mas na, nasusweep natin under the rug kapag secret sins. We think of it that way. So, we are more lenient to ourselves. Pero sabi natin, sabi ng ating confession, uh, this is in chapter 6, I believe. Uh, Second London Baptist of Faith uh, Confession, chapter 6, paragraph 2. The corruption of nature during this life does remain in those that are regenerated. This means that even if you are a professing Christian and you are truly a Christian, that doesn't hide the fact that there are still remaining sins in our lives. And although it be through Christ pardoned and mortified, sabihin, kahit na talagang napagbayaran na ito ng nagawa ng finished work ni Christ, yet both itself, meaning yung sin, and the first motions thereof are truly and properly sin. So it doesn't matter if it is a known sin, a hidden sin, we are not to uh, be more lenient sa ating pagkakasala in secret versus ang ating pagkakasala in public. Both are sin. So, both should be treated equally. Both should be killed the same way. Next, because we deal with sin in outward respects only. So, minsan, nadideceive din po tayo ng secret sins because we tend to give, yun nga, more importance. We deal with outward sins. Kapag, eh, we deal with sin kapag uh, open in public na ito. We, uh, we don't sin only for the fear of being punished or suffering the uh, I mean sorry we sin only uh, we refrain from sinning only for the fear of being punished or suffering consequences in public so minsan hindi ho talaga natin pinagsisisihan wala tayong talagang willingness to mortify the sin we're just afraid of being caught that's why we don't do it so again it boils down to the matter of the heart tipo so we think secret sin is okay because we will not be punished or seen by others. Okay, sabi ng Ubidaya, secret sinning, it being visible, therefore escapes all the outward restraints by the seeing, speaking, and judging of men. Meaning, nakakalagpas ito sa mata ng tao. It has mainly to attend to what conscience will say, which perhaps is ignorant or drowsy. And if it does speak, yet it is not regarded. So, ibig sabihin ito, uh, bukod sa nakakalampas na sa mata ng tao, nakakalampas din sa konsensya natin. Uh, either our, uh, our conscience is weak or drowsy, or even if na catch natin yung sin na yon. for example a sin of pride or anger even if we catch it we just let it go okay uh, we do not regard it so yun ho ay mali okay so sabi ni Obedaya now mark of all sins I them most that most easily deceive you meaning we have to be more ready to catch and kill the sins that we seem to think is simple. These a man commits most, 
affects most and continues in longest. longest. Since therefore secret sins come under that form, is it not necessary to labor to be cleansed from them? So nakikita ko natin, ganito pala, kala natin is uh, simpleng pagkakasala lang, simpleng sin lang, na pwede natin palampasin. Pero, gaya ng sinabi ni uh, Obedaya, dahil ginagawa mong, uh, dahil uh, uh, you don't make a big deal out of that sin, it stays with you longer. Mas, therefore, as it stays with us longer, mas naapektuhan ho tayo. Diba? So, my point being, quoting from Obadiah is, let's watch out for subtle sins. Subtle sins, we commit them the most. Subtle sins, it affects us the most. Subtle sins, it continues with us the most. Okay? So, let us be careful with secret sins because it will deceive us if we are not careful. Third, we have to have the desire uh, to, uh, to be cleansed from secret sins because the strength of sin is inward. Okay, so hindi uh, na natin to, I do not, not need to explain this further dahil kita na, uh, actually nararanasan ho natin to uh, regularly when right before the actual act of sinning. Nakukumpare ho natin siya sa isang sakit. Like in sickness, the effects greatly affects us, but it will not stop until the root cause is addressed. So sometimes uh, we experience a, a fever, let's say a, a probably a high fever, uh, our, our bodies are in pain. But sometimes if you just treat the fever, like for example, uh, I'm use usual na sorry medical term ba yun uh, yung di ba pag may lagnat ho pinapahit na gaano tayo ng malamig na towel uh, uh, or miinom tayo ng pampababa ng temperature natin pero as it turns out yung pala yung root cause niya probably lang ho uh, yung pala meron kang uh, sore throat na sobrang sakit pero hindi mo eto hindi mo napapansin yung sore throat hindi mo na-address yung root cause dito nung, nung inflammation ng throat mo ang ina-address mo lang yung yung effects niya diba? so if that is the case hindi ho magsa-stop yung, panana, yung yung ating fever kasi hindi na-address yung root cause just like with sin yung sin niya yung strength ng sin natin is inward if we only deal with the effects of sin and really not the root cause which usually starts with the heart in secret, then we should not be surprised if we continue to sin. Again, yun yung, uh, yung binasa natin kanina sa, uh, sa James chapter 1, verse 15. But unless the desire to, uh, for sinning is conceived, wala hong mangyayaring kasalanan. So, dum pa lang hu sa desire, we should stop it. We should identify that na and do everything, labor, ika nga ni Obedaya, to stop it. Sabi ni Mark Jones in his book, Knowing Sin, we tend to judge our outward acts of sin more strictly than our inward sins, even excusing the lack because they did not become actual outward sins. Because we did not tell a certain person, uh, we find her reprehensible, but only in thought, uh, only thought it instead, with hatred in our hearts. We imagine we have committed some act of righteousness by our restraint. So instead of being humbled for our thoughts, we actually applaud ourselves. So this means na may nabuo pang pride boasting sa sarili mo kasi in mo, hindi nag, since hindi nag-manifest yung sin na-restrain mo siya inward ibig sabihin parang you, good job self uh, hindi tayo nag-sin towards others pero deep inside there you are cultivating hatred and anger probably towards a person but towards others imagine uh, in a scenario of a, uh, of a husband and wife uh, if the husband restrains his anger outwardly, 
Diba? Kasi sabi sa, ano, I should love you as Christ loved the church and uh, and water you, shower you, water you with the word. So, sige, mag-devota uh, family, di, devo tayo palagi, papakainin kita ng word ni God. But your heart, you keep it inside, you na, may kinaiinis ka dun sa wife mo and kinukultivate mo yon. It, it's still sin. Kahit na sabihin natin regular ang ating family worship. Same din sa wife. Even if you say na I submit to my wife uh, kasi sabi sa scripture na I should uh, submit to my uh, sorry, my sabi ng wife kay husband na si wife daw, I, I should submit to my husband kasi siya yung authority na binigay sa akin. But deep inside, di ba? Hindi ka sumunod talaga ng, uh, with your heart. Uh, it's still sin. Naalala ko yung sabi ni, uh, ni John MacArthur, uh, tinanong siya ano daw difference ng uh, obeying your parents and honoring your parents. So yung dinistinguish niya is, you can obey outwardly and still disobey with your heart. Sabihin, may grumbling ka sa yung heart. When you honor your parents, you obey not just with the physical, pero with your heart. You know that you obeyed, really. So... Ganun din sa atin. Sin of, the strength of sin is inward. So not unless i-address po natin yung ating mga uh, sin na sa loobin. Kahit na sabihin natin we're doing well physically, outside, in the eyes of man, uh, babalik at babalik po tayo, magkakaroon ng effect sa atin ito. Obidaya said that though the outward actings are bad enough, sabi mo, masama na tayo yun, pagkakasala physic na outward, na nakita ng tao, yet the strongholds are within the soul. Okay. So, ang point ko is a way to stop a sin is to identify the desire that causes it from so if you are struggling with sin, if we are struggling with sin, first thing we should do, gaya nga po sa, sa isang corporate, uh, ng corporate term na root cause analysis, uh, hahanapin natin yung root cause. Ano ko ba yung pinanggagalingan ng ating kasalanan? And when we find it, uh, we should not disregard, we should act upon it to kill it. At least, uh, ano tayo sa part na alam na natin, na-identify na natin, so... Meron na tayo ngayong paraan para alam na natin. Okay, so we have to identify what causes us to sin from within. Okay. Then lastly, we should desire to be cleansed from secret sins kasi God's um, God's focus is the heart of man. Okay, again, God's focus is the heart of man. Uno sa God does not listen to a man that continues to sin. Uh, if we could go to Psalm chapter 66 verse 18, uh, it's uh, Psalmist says that if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. It, uh, I'm not saying that uh, if you are someone who is sinning, the Lord doesn't hear you. Again, God is uh, omniscient. And also, if I may add, uh, omnipresent, uh, meaning God is everywhere. Okay, so for a someone, for an unrepentant sinner, it doesn't mean that God doesn't hear you. Oh, yes, He does. But in a relational way, He doesn't listen to you. Hindi kanya pakikinggan. Okay, um, so sabi ni Psalmist, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened to me. And also, uh, if we could continue, sorry, next slide. Psalm chapter 66, verse 18. Sabi, rin, sabi dito, Behold, you delight in truth, meaning si God thou, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. So, God delights when we pattern our hearts into His statutes. Ganun lang kadali. And Obidaya uh, said, it is true that God gives charge against open sins, meaning God deals with open sins. Why? Because He would not have any to be profane. Okay, so God is holy. He doesn't tolerate sin. So if someone sins outwardly, then God deals with it. But just the same, sabi ni so he gives singular charge against secret sins. Meaning, he also deals with the secret sins. Why? Because he cannot endure any to be hypocritical. And hypocrisy is sin. 
The man is to God what his inside is. If you have wickedness in your heart, God will destroy you. Plaster your visible part with all sorts of pious expressions. Ibig sabihin, kahit na pulo pa, uh, kahit na uh, plaster, uh, puluputan mo, puluputan mo yung sarili mo, eh, bihisan mo yung sarili mo ng good works, quote-unquote, good works, if yet, you can set up a form of sinning within, you are notable hypocrites. That is hypocrisy, ibig sabihin. Uh, you, you rate yourself as someone who does good works, but deep inside you sin, it is hypocrisy. The Lord sees you to be false and rotten, and He will discharge Himself of you. So, guys, no, sinabi nung sa, sa Matthew 7 uh, in the last days uh, many will say to me Lord, Lord diba? uh, sabi, many have paraded themselves have plastered with themselves uh, with all sorts of piousness we, did we not prophesy in your name did we not do good works in your name but in the end if there is a sinning uh, against uh, inside of them, meaning they're, uh, if people are not really unrepentant, then they are notable hypocrites and the Lord will discharge himself from those kinds of people. My point being is that God does not tolerate hypocrisy. And hence, we should desire to be cleansed from secret sins. Okay. So... Before I go to the lesson, just some warnings, just a warning. Okay, so there are many people who wallow in secret sins. Kumbaga, nagtatampisaw. Nag, nag, kumbaga, they enjoy. Uh, they, they do not mortify their, their sin, sins in secret. They wallow in it. Sabi sa, um, sa Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verse 12. Uh, this was uh, this was Paul's not really warning, but uh, it also uh, it also would seem uh, that way. Uh, pagpupunta sa Ephesians, so binabalaan niya yung uh, Ephesian church dito na take no part in the fruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to uh, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in <clears throat> in secret. So, magita nito yung uh, that there are people uh, magita natin who does things in secret, who hides things, and who doesn't want public to see. Their sin. They're, they're sinning. Say yun nga, is, it is shameful. But they do wallow in the, the, those sins. So, kailangan ho natin mag-ingat na, ka, na tayo ay mapunta sa ganong state. That we wallow in secret sins. And we have to remember, there are at least three sins na kinokomit natin kapag ka tayo ay nagpapatuloy in sinning in secret. Una ho, na sin na kinokomit natin, uh, the very sin that we try to conceal. Obviously, we commit it. Okay, the very sin, sin that we conceal, uh, conceal. The next sin we commit is the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy that we used for concealing that sin. And then yung third po, which is somehow hindi natin may isip outright, is the atheism that we practice thinking God does not see what we have concealed. So ano ho ba yung atheism? Di ba yung atheism is yung paniniwala na walang Diyos? Bilang Kristiyano, actually kahit hindi Christians, minsan sinasabi lang, din naniniwala kami na may Diyos. But when we sin, Pwede nating sabihin sa yung consider yung sarili natin na we are practical atheists. And yun yung sinasabi natin, paano na practice yun? Kapag we sin as if there is no God. Uh, si Mark Jones, dun sa kanyang librong Knowing Sin, kinote niya si uh, Stephen Charnock. And Stephen said, Open impieties are refrained because of the eye of man. But secret sins are not checked because of the eye of God. So, ano yung sinasabi dito ni Mark, ni, na, ni Stephen? So, in-explain siya ni Mark Jones. Uh, sabi ni Mark Jones, ito raw yung ibig sabihin ni Stephen Charnock. God's omniscient eye is not enough 
to dissuade the wicked from committing sin because they are practical atheists. Again, you, do, you don't have to confess na, oy, atheist ako, to become a practical atheist. When you continue in sin, as though living as though God does not exist, we practice practical atheism. As practical atheists, we know God exists. But our actions betray such when we sin against His name and law and imagine He does not see us. In fact, when we sin, we don't want Him around. Yeah, so, yun ang, yun yung tatlong sin, uh, minimum of three sins that we commit when we uh, nourish our secret sins. The sin itself, the hypocrisy that we conceal it with, and yung atheism natin in sinning as if there is no God. So, we have to be careful with it. Paano ho yung papasok sa ating uh, context sa uh, siguro, uh, isipin, uh, isipin na lang ho natin in the local church context, di ba? Um, paano ho tayo makakapag-develop ng secret sins dito? Uh, Kailangan ho natin mag-ingat in, uh, I would uh, think, uh, on the top of my head, probably pwede tayong mag-develop dito ng sin of envy or sin of pride. Diba? Kasi, syempre, na, we are amongst other people. So, there are tendencies na baka na, makompare natin yung sarili natin sa iba. Diba? Either kaingitan natin sila for being uh, somehow in a better state than we are or think of ourselves highly though dahil sila yung nasa challenging times ng buhay nila. We have to assess and be very careful of ourselves because we think of uh, kapag ka na-develop natin yung ganun without dealing with it, ay makaka-apek ho yun sa, kap- sa pag-edify natin sa isa't isa. Diba? Kung ikaw na lang ay may natatagong anger o galit sa iyong kapatid, di ba maa-apektuhan nun yung fellowship nyo? Uy, ansan tayo mamiya? Dinner time. Uwi na ako. Uh, Marami pa akong gagawin. Pero the reality is, uh, libre pala yung oras mo and you just don't want to hang out with that person. You see how it develops? At at first, when I was studying this, I thought just the th- secret sins outright would be pornography. Kasi yun yung usual, di ba? Pagka-secret, something you do in secret. Pero nung narealize ko dito, pati pala yung ganun na hindi mo, na kinikim-kim mo lang, that is a secret sin. And it would affect us. So imagine na lang dun siya sa church setting. And that is just a a practical random example. Diba? And pag dinevelop natin yun, ano nangyari? Nagkakaroon ng divisive spirit within the church. Nawawala yung unity ng church. All because there are those sins that we hard, uh, na inaalagaan natin from inside. Okay. So I'm not saying na bigla nating sabihin dito, oh, mayroon akong secret sin na ganito. Pero habang nasa loob pa natin, uh, we have to be careful and we have to develop uh, a habit and train ourselves to stop it from inside. So if if we think uh, lustfully, alisin agad natin, sa isip natin yun. If we envy towards others, practice natin yung pagiging contented. Diba? If we harbor anger towards others, uh, practice natin magpakita ng grace and mercy and love towards others. So, uh, where where would we better practice that than in our local church? So, uh, I pray na sa atin hong local church ay magkaroon ho tayo ng uh, ganitong klaseng uh, awareness sa secret sins ng sa ganon. Uh, individually, ma- ma-stop natin and hindi tayo maapektuhan in our personal lives. And also, para mag-benefit din tayo from one another. Uh, mas mag-benefit ho tayo if secret sins are being dealt with uh, from uh, by each one one of us. And so a challenge para sa atin po, do not think that we can make a fool. Napakabigat na term. Do not think that we can make a fool out of God by continuing our sinning in secret. Okay? Let us repent of our secret sins and cry out 
diba? Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yun know, ho, diba, dapat ang ating uh, ang heart cry, uh, knowing na habang nandito ho tayo sa mundo at sinasanctify tayo, may secret sins pa rin tayo. I'm not saying mawawala siya dahil aware na tayo, pero dahil aware na tayo ngayon na may ganitong klaseng mga sins, we know how to deal with them now. There are five lessons that I want to share with you. And uh, may progression, I want you to see yung progression nitong uh, five lessons na to. So hindi ko to hiwahiwalay na lesson, may kita natin na rela- related sila sa isa't isa. So una sa lahat, God is omniscient. And if I may add, God is omnipresent. God is all-knowing and God is everywhere. There is nothing hidden from Him. Again, yung atin hong mga verses kanina, like in Hebrews, uh, Lahat ng bagay ay kita ng Panginoon and therefore magbibigay tayo ng account sa lahat ng ating ginawa. ba? And dahil magbibigay tayo ng account sa at lahat ng ating ginawa, uh, yung second lesson is that we will always have remaining sins while we live in this world. So kailangan ho nating maging aware na talagang magpapatuloy yung ating mga remaining sins dahil nga yung corruption ng ating flesh ay nandito pa. Uh, it will remain with us either until we die or until Christ comes back again. At dahil aware ho tayo that God is everywhere and God is see- sees us and that we can hide no sin from God, Papasok ko yung lesson number three natin. Our sinfulness should make us all the more run to Christ. Our sinfulness should make us all the more run to Christ. Every time na binabasa ko natin yung Decalogue, di ba, sinasabi doon uh, that it should, it should be a reflection of, uh, it reflects God's holy standard and also it reflects yung sinfulness natin kapag nababangga natin or na, uh, if we assess ourselves uh, from God's holy standards, it reveals our sinfulness to us. It reveals our inability to uh, to really pay for the penalty of our sins for we know that we are wretched sinners and again, all the more that we should run to Christ. Sabi ni Mark Jones against a knowing sin. In one sense, this is a problem for us. Meaning yung pagiging all-knowing and uh, uh, and omnipresent daw ni God. It should, in one sense, be a problem for us. Kasi we cannot escape God's eye. But in another sense, this is the solution. Bakit ho? The God who sees immediately can cleanse us and restore us. Those who live in the Spirit will desire such inward cleansing. Again, you kino din ho niya. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is, is the cry of all true believers. It should make us run to Christ. Okay, number four, our conversion is not the end of our mortification of sins, but the beginning. Hindi po porki sinabi natin that, uh, uh, that we are Christians. Uh, uh, it's the end. Dahil, dahil sinabi natin that we have repented of our sins and put our faith in Christ. It, it, is the last, it is not the last time that we are repenting. It is the start. And the Christian's life is a life of daily repentance. Kasi kinokonf- ang, ano nga, ang, ang sabi nga ng ating, uh, ng, ng ating scripture, you know, the Word of God says that na tayong, na mga nasa kanya, we are being conformed to the image of His Son, to the image of Christ. Are we perfectly conformed? Not yet. Kaya po magpapatuloy na while we are here on earth, may discipline na nangyayari para sa mga uh, mga na kay Kristo. Uh, Sabi sa Hebrews, di ba, My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when reproved by Him. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves. So, our conversion is not the end of the mortification of sin. But the beginning. And lastly, never stop growing in the Word of God to know more about ourselves, our sins, and about God and His grace. So, hindi porkiyo nakarinig na tayo ng gospel ay yun na. 
Never stop growing in the Word of God, in the wisdom uh, that is given by the Spirit of God. You know, yung prayer ni Paul um, when, he write, when he wrote to the Ephesian church, thanking them uh, for their faith. Pero sabi niya, hindi rin siya nagsa-stop in praying for them. Praying for what? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. Paul is not saying here, na hindi wala pa sa kanila yung knowledge and yung truth about the gospel pero even then na magpatuloy diba? so we should not stop growing in our knowledge of Him having our eyes the eyes of our hearts enlightened okay so God is a gracious God uh, even though He sees everything every bit of our sin He still had He still showed grace and gave us His Son to pay for the penalty of our sins. Again, everything that He saw, past, present, and future. And He gave us His Spirit to empower us to continue in this life of mortifying sins. Not just those that, in, that are in public, but also those that are in secret. So let us identify our secret sins. And let us always desire to be cleansed from it. Okay, so uh, that ends our lecture for this afternoon. Uh, next week po, uh, continue natin yung ating lecture on secret sins. Ang magiging uh, uh, pagkukunan naman natin ang kaalaman for next week ay si Spurgeon naman po. The folly, the misery, the guilt, and danger of secret sins. Um, any questions po for now um, for this lecture? <coughs> Si ano rapo, Brother Jeng. Question lang ko yah don sa uh, don sa sa bayon. So hidden from others, uh, yung man sins within himself away from mortal eyes. So yung sa third point. Hidden from others. Uh, ah, yeah. na man sins within himself away from mortal eyes. So ano po yung difference niya? Kasi di ba yung fruit ng spirit is also self-control. Okay. So ano yung difference niya from that? Difference ng... Yung hiding ng away from mortal eyes. Like yung for example mo nga, di ba yung kapag may anger tayo again sa wife, ganun, tapos hindi mo siya uh, ipapakita pero ikikip mo lang siya within yourself. So ano yung difference niya dun sa fruit ng spirit na self-control? Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Jeng's question, eh, kasi uh, kung titignan nung natin yung situation na binigay ni, ni Jeng, uh, it's as if yung pag-keep mo ng anger mo, uh, let's say, for example, uh, sample lang yung sa wife, husband and wife, uh, pero it, it can manifest in any other way. So, for example, yung pag-keep mo ng anger mo, di ba parang, ang sabi ni Jeng is parang, lumaba, parang lumalabas na, di ba fruit of the spirit yon kasi self-control. You're controlling yourself na you, you stopped it. Tama ba? Parents. Ano yung difference ah. nun ngayon dun sa, uh, from it being a hidden sin. Okay. So, ang difference nun is once you caught that, um, for example, nangyari na nga yun, and then, na develop yung yung anger. Nag-consume yung nagalit ka talaga eh, so hindi mo napigilan. Pero na-control mo siyang hindi lumabas at magmanifest at makita ng iba. Ba? Pero ngayon, what happened to your heart after that? Uh, kasi if it is the fruit, the fruit of the spirit with uh, self-control, yes, you were able to exercise it that way. Pero ano pa ba yung ibang fruit ng Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience. Okay, so thank you, Deacon Glenn. So it's not just the single fruit of the Spirit na kailangan mong ibi i cultivate or practice. Uh, the difference is kung nagkaroon ka ng self-control to stop it, uh, hindi mo siya dapat i-harbor sa sarili mo. Yun yung problem when you keep that secret sin na tinatago mo lang siya for the, from the mortal eye pero deep inside meron ka. Did you mortify it? If not, it's sin. If you mortified it, uh, actually, it's still sin, pero at least you stopped it and you didn't, I mean, hindi ka nag, I mean, nag-repent ka from it. So, that's the difference. Na, clear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, uh, any questions, Papa? See, brother John, uh, John, sorry, in Egypt, Carlo. Carlo. Bro. I yes, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, naisip ko lang bro uh, question sa so, tingin mo what are your thoughts dun sa yung kay Eve Nag- nagsin na ba siya nung naisip niya na kainin pa lang nung nasa thoughts pa lang niya sorry bro sorry stop it ito mock kasi yung ano, <coughs> ano, ano yung, what are my thoughts on uh, na- nagsin na ba si Eve nung nasa thoughts pa lang niya na kainin niya yung fruit o nung kinain pa lang na yung fruit? Ah, okay. Good question. Uh, so, yung tanong is, nagsina ba si Eve on the act? Or dun sa, uh, sa thought? Okay. So, again, uh, siguro, ang pwede nating kuning scriptural basis niyan, uh, isa na nga yung sinabi natin sa, 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 sa James, ba na na nagsta-start ang sin doon sa desire mo. Pag nag-conceive, yung, yung desire mo, when it will conceive of sin. So, doon magsa-start na. Also, magiging basis din natin is how uh, Christ uh, really thought yung command, yung, yung Ten Commandments. Di ba? Kailang ka nag-commit ng murder. Uh, it's not when you do the actual the act of murder, but when you think angrily, tama ba? When, when you harbor anger at, towards a brother. Diba? You commit adultery, uh, hindi lang dahil na, na you had the the, uh, the capacity na uh, to commit it, the, the actual act, pero when you look at a woman with lust. Diba? So, uh, same uh, same principle would uh, apply for Eve. Uh, hindi lang nung actual act of getting the fruit and biting it na nagkasala siya, but the actual uh, thought of it. Okay. Uh, much, much like si Satan, diba? how was Satan banished by, by God? Uh, how was he struck down? Um, he, hindi naman siya naging equal ni God talaga. Diba? He didn't really have the capacity to really uh, rise up to the level of God. Pero he thought about being equal with God. And therefore, he was struck down. So, yan. dun sa thought. Okay. Uh, sige po. Uh, any questions pa po? Uh, possibly two more daw? Uh, hi. Uh, follow up lang dun sa last na sinabi mo. Uh, is question lang, is there any way ba na pa, any possibility na prevent mo yun? Kasi personally, I don't think na mapipigilan mo yung thought. So forever na ba talagang I will always be sinful na talaga sa ganun. Bro. bro, sorry, uh, what's your name? Louis. Louis, uh, nice meeting you, Louis. Sorry, first time. Nice to meet you. Nice. So, and thank you for the question. So, uh, maganda yung tanong ni Louis. No? So, alam natin yung nagsa-start siya from within. Is there any way to stop? Uh, medyo yes and no yung answer ko doon. Uh, yung unang sagot ko na yes. Uh, sorry, yung no muna. Mas madali yung no. So, Yung sa no, I would say there is no way of stopping it kasi if you say that you are able to completely stop sinning, kahit yung sa thought, you would say na uh, you are now in a perfect state. Ba? Uh, and if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Okay? So no, we have no absolute way of stopping it, not unless bumalik ulit si Christ. Okay? But also, yes. Yung answer ko na yes is in the sense na mas matutulungan mo yung sarili mo to prevent from those uh, things from occurring. So, how, uh, paano ko nasabi yun? For example, again, with uh, with pornography. But let's say pornography na lang. Uh, struggle mo talaga yun kasi may at maya may sumasagi sa isip mo. How would you train yourself to stop from thinking it? Uh, 
first step is probably lubayan mo yung mga yung mga let's say websites or movies that would cultivate that kind of thought na makikreate mo yon so that's one way the, the lesser you watch pornographic films uh, the lesser chance you have of thinking uh, or of developing yung kind of thinking na that would think uh, lustfully against uh, uh, towards a, a woman diba uh, pangalawa um yung na uh, I, I don't know if familiar ka or na, na dito kasi minsan siya sabi is if you want to mortify the sin you have to cultivate the opposite grace so the more you cultivate the opposite grace uh, the more, the lesser chance you have of you know developing a kind of thinking that would um, develop any any uh, any of that kind of sin for example um, in anger, diba? how would you cultivate in, uh, uh, or let's say pride, diba? how would you cultivate an opposite grace of pride? What's the opposite of, of, of being uh, proud? Diba? Being humble. Diba? So practice actions that would, uh, you know, uh, show humility. But like, uh, for example, um, if someone is doing great, uh, kunyari, may uh, naka-achieve siya ng success in life, diba? uh, gumanda-ganda yung buhay niya, uh, usually nagkikreate ka ng pride pag kinip mo sa sarili mo, uh, pero you can cultivate a um, an opposite grace of that by uh, putting an action opposite it, like actually praising the, uy bro, uh, na, na, ano ko, ganito, ganito na yung kunyari, uh, natanggap, na-promote ka sa trabaho, uh, congratulations. Uh, so you engage yourself in things opposite uh, to the kind of thinking or sinning that you do. So, uh, yun, kaya yes and no yung answer ko. No, you can stop it completely, but yes, there are ways uh, para matulungan natin yung sarili natin na uh, hindi na makultivate yung ganun klase ng pag-iisip. Uh, that way, mas the lesser chance of really um, really committing a sin within. Okay, so, medyo, uh, did I answer it somehow? All right. Thank you, Louis. Nice meeting you again. Sige po. Uh, sige po, uh, last question. Ba? Or, yeah, probably last question para may uh, bathroom time pa po. Tas if there are Hello. any others, CR. Bro, okay lang. Go, bro. Sige. Uh, I think yung sinabi mo kanina was very helpful that yung sins natin, it points us to Christ. Uh, siguro yung question, it's more of parang I want you sana to uh, elaborate how how that specifically, yung knowledge of uh, what Christ has done um, encourages us or, point, or points us to Christ, how our sins points us to Christ. And siguro related to that, as a church, how do we cultivate yung um, atmosphere na, we all know we're sinners, but we don't usually are com- we are not comfortable in talking about our hidden sins. So as a church, how do we cultivate that? Yung parang encourage people to talk about their sins. Of course, not to celebrate, but to confess our sins to one another. Um, so yeah, siguro related. How does our sin point us to Christ? Okay. Maybe you can elaborate on that and how can we cultivate that kind of atmosphere in the church? Okay. So, yung sa unang uh, question ni Matt is how can our uh, sins or kahit yung uh, uh, secret sins, tama ba? How does our sins point us to Christ? Ah, my third question. Ah, third lesson is our sinfulness should make us all the more run to Christ. Ah, okay. Kasi what I mean by our sinfulness should make us all the more run to Christ, uh, like I said, the, the lessons are uh, that, that I gave was progressive. So since alam na may idea tayo of who God is, um, of His holiness, and also of how sinful we are, and that there are still remaining sins in us, uh, ang next nating magiging way of thinking, dapat, as Christians, should be, uh, there is nothing in us us, therefore, that would make God welcome us in His kingdom to reconcile with us. And therefore, yung third lesson, that our sinfulness should make us all the more run to Christ. And the fact that the remaining sins cannot, the hidden sins can 
kahit public pala, uh, cannot be totally eradicated as of now, all the more that we should run to Christ. How? Uh, paano ko nasabing we should run to Christ? Uh, we cannot ask God for mercy with the hope na papatawarin niya tayo apart from Christ. Why? Because we know that God cannot forgive us for anything na ating kaya, kayang gawin in and of ourselves, but only with our faith in what Christ has done for us, which is to pay for our sins and also cover us in the righteousness na hindi natin kayang uh, maatin dahil nga, again, sa ating sinfulness. So, yun lang yung... Uh, Kaya tayo napopoint ng ating sinfulness kay, um, kay Christ. Uh, tapos yung parang follow-up mo is how we can cultivate that in the church. Ah, okay. Uh, kung pa, um, well, I wouldn't... Um, if you, uh, siguro po, for the members of the church, uh, uh, aware naman kayo that there are uh, not just public disciplines, uh, public church discipline, meron ding private church discipline, di ba? So meron tayong mga um, kapatid na under discipline na hindi natin alam. So uh, in that sense, um, there is wisdom naman na hindi mo basta-basta ikwento na lang sa lahat yung iyong, uh, yung iyong sin. Lalo na kung alam mo na yung kapatid mong yun is someone who is struggling the same, uh, I don't think uh, it is wise. But, uh, as a church, uh, guro una sa lahat, uh, yung, yung, yung someone who is struggling can can probably say to a brother or sister, kahit di pa niya kayang mamin, please pray for me. Uh, I'm I, I'm struggling with something right now. Uh, in that sense, the, the church can pr- uh, practice praying for one another. Uh, hindi lang dahil alam nila specifically na merong sin, alam nilang uh, that brother is, is struggling. Uh, also, dun din papasok yung, uh, yung beauty ng ating church that na, uh, na tayo ikilal ng ating pastor. Okay? Uh, na, 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 that anytime we can come to our pastor, that our pastor is not just a celebrity pastor, so to speak, na uh, siya yung head ng church natin, pero really, wala siyang relation sa atin. Uh, I guess uh, that is one way of how we can uh, practice dealing with our secret sins. Uh, knowing that by structure uh, of the Word of God, yun dapat yung uh, yung work or task ng pastor that he should be exercising among us. So, papasok na rin dun bro yung exercise natin ng humility natin. We should be humble enough uh, and dun dapat makultivate yung trust natin sa ating pastor to to approach him kung meron tayong mga ganong struggles. So, ayun. Sige. Uh, sige po, uh, five minutes na lang po. Uh, if there are still any questions, last na lang Si Shala. Naalala ko. Ah, time na. Sorry. Ah, sige. Pwede siguro ano na lang. Yeah, sige, sige. Sige po, uh, time na raw po. So I'll give everyone time then to go to the bathroom for our 3 p.m. Wor- before our 3 p.m. worship starts. Uh, let's close in prayer na lang po muna siguro. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this opportunity uh, para kami ay makapag-aral ng iyong uh, salita and also to um, uh, for us to be able to learn uh, more about uh, sa lahat yung wretchedness namin, Panginoon, na even if we are we are already Christians, uh, there is still a remaining sin with us that needs to be dealt with. Uh, there are public and also there are these secret sins. I pray, Lord, that each one of us uh, will uh, will humbly come to you and recognize that we cannot fight this on our own and that we need your help most especially in dealing with our secret sins. We pray, Lord, that you empower us by your spirit to cultivate a humble heart uh, and an honest heart uh, to be able to come clean with any sins that we have that needs dealing with. Panginoon, dalangin ko rin po for this uh, church na magkaroon po ng uh, ng, ng, ng heart uh, for unity uh, 
that by not cultivating uh, or nurturing any inward sins towards one another and really coming clean and mortifying it nang sa ganun Panginoon ang bawat isa sa amin ay talagang truly ma-edify ang isa't isa uh, no why mag ma, ma uh, mamalagi ang iyong pagmamahal dito sa, sa church na ito and uh, that we may also practice our love for one another. Uh, we praise you, we love you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pa.